Okay guys, <clears throat> I'm back in the wine cellar and I wanted to talk to you guys today about uh, variable capacity stainless steel tanks. Uh, so these are tanks that have floating lids. You can see here, this is a lid for one of the tanks. It's got a air stop on it. There's a hose that comes with it, which goes around the outside rim of the tank plug goes through the hose here uh, which would be this little plug fits inside here like this I don't want to push it in for now because uh, we're not putting these tanks into service until next fall and I'm, I'd rather just keep the gasket uh, in good shape before we actually put it on here uh, but essentially the gasket goes in here you then connect it with an additional hose that comes with the tank and then you attach it to uh, to the pump that comes with the stainless steel tank um, super simple you just take the handles here you place it on top of the wine depending on how much wine you have in here it could be 50 gallons uh, it could be you know 80 gallons if you want to fill it to the top the lid will float and then once it uh, stabilizes, you simply pump up the, uh, the pump until you get the pressure on the gasket into the green zone. Um, and basically by doing that, you're opening up this valve, uh, which allows the air in. You have to open it up just enough to allow the air in, but not out. And then once it's done, you tighten it up and uh, in theory it should stay for a while so these are two new tanks that we bought this year uh, we are slowly but surely investing in stainless steel moving everything to stainless steel uh, i have had you know at one any given time 30 carboys uh, 12 demi johns and you know one after another has broken they're dangerous they're slippery they're cumbersome so we've decided a couple of years back we're going to invest in in equipment and my group of guys that I make wine with every year gets bigger and bigger and we do what we call a capital contribution. So every year we kick in a few extra dollars and when we save enough money we buy better equipment. So one of the things that we have done to upgrade our tanks uh, because we don't want the pressure to ever come down uh, is we add a little valve between the pump and the actual gasket and this valve when we turn it on you can see hopefully it's going to work here uh, let's see there we go so now the valve is on you can see we are over half a bar of pressure and that's plenty to keep this gasket uh, nice and tight you can see by pulling on it it's not slipping uh, you do not want to get it to that red line. Anything beyond that will actually damage the tank. Uh, so what I wanted to uh, point out is, uh, you obviously saw the needle jump. When the uh, valve isn't on, that air would leak and then you would have a problem down the road. So you always want to make sure that you're adding a valve to your gasket. You shut the gasket. Once it's to pressure, you shut that gasket off and leave it off and you should never have a problem with uh, air infiltration on your wine. Another thing I like to do is, I just, this happens to be a, a food thermometer, but it doesn't matter, it just, it's a thermometer. Uh, and the wine right now is going through malolactic fermentation, so I just keep this on here to make sure that the temperature is within range. Um, the other thing that you have to be very uh, cognizant of is the level of the floor and the level of the wine. Uh, we try to get it as close to level as possible. Uh, we want to make sure, and oops, you check both ways, this way, and then you go perpendicular to it. Uh, that way when you float the lid on top of the wine, uh, you're not creating a bunch of air gaps. Now, even though we've done that, you can see this side of the tank, uh, the lid is pretty much up on the lip. And here we're about a half inch down. The tank is level. Why is it doing that? It's because the volume of wine flexes and moves and, and um, 
in this case, we're going through a malolactic fermentation, so it's causing a little bit of gas to, to blow off. So every once in a while, you have to come here, open up the valve, release the pressure from the gasket, float the lid back up, repressurize it, and you're good to go. Uh, these particular tanks are Letina tanks. They're made in Croatia. Uh, very, very high quality. I bought all of our tanks from St. Patrick's um, in Austin, Texas. Um, really good tanks, very good price. They all come with a little tasting valve. They come with the uh, top valve, and then these are all conical, so there's a second valve uh, on the bottom to, uh, depending on what you're doing. Uh, if I'm just pulling the wine out the first time, I'm using that valve and then probably switching to the lower valve. If it's clean wine and you're using it to bottle, you could go right off the bottom valve. Uh, so the last thing I wanna show you here is the uh, air gap system or the, uh, the stop, the air stop. And basically I fill the wine up to right around here in this case. I just want it above the neck slightly. And this has, it's a spring loaded. Um, you can see it's, it doesn't take a lot of pressure to push it up, but it's a spring loaded um, contraption. You simply screw it on here, and if the wine is gassing, uh, whether it's through malolactic or it's going through a secondary fermentation, uh, it won't blow the lid off the, uh, the top of the tank. Uh, it's basically the, uh, the bubbler, quote unquote, for the tank. So uh, invest in these. This, so this is the older Letina version. This one actually is a, a tank on wheels. You can see it's only got the, uh, the little red line. These new ones actually show a green zone where you should be in terms of pressure. So um, I like these a little bit more. Haven't used it yet, but it's just a little easier. Once it's in that green zone, you should be able to tighten it up and call it a day. Uh, but I know these are expensive. They're about $800 a piece. Um, this one is on wheels. We bought it originally. It was in our, my basement. These two are not on wheels. Uh, they're a little bit smaller, so moving them around isn't quite as cumbersome. Um, this one is probably about, I'll call it four feet tall and maybe about 30 inches and 28 inches in diameter. This one's about five feet tall and about 33, 34 inches in diameter. This one may be 20, 24. But uh, either way, um, very, very high quality tanks. Uh, and we decided to start investing in these. We had, like I said, at one point, uh, 12 Demijohns. And at $65 a piece, we're literally down to four Demijohns of the 12. And the Carboys... At one point, we had over 30 carboys, and you know it's it's a pain in the neck to wash 30 carboys and fill 30 carboys. You do it once with a variable capacity tank, and uh, life is a lot easier. These I got through St. Patrick's, but more wine also sells them smaller smaller tanks. I believe the smallest one is maybe 50 gallons. And it runs about $500, $600. If you guys are serious about making wine, this is the absolute best way to go. Uh, I know quite a few guys who have these in their basement. Uh, they fill them up for the year and they just come up to the tasting valve, fill up a bottle uh, whenever they want to have a bottle for dinner and uh, drop. They take the pressure out of the, uh, the lid, let the lid drop as they fill the bottle and then repressurize it. Um, I mean, it's, it's very convenient to have one of these in your basement. And if you're going to be serious about making wine and make a bigger quantity, these are a lifesaver. Uh, one thing that we also invested in this year is a jet, uh, 05 pump. This is just a wine pump. It's not a must pump. Um, it has a port in and a port out. We got a bunch of fittings for it. I'll do a separate review on this to uh, see how it works. We haven't uh, tested it yet. The wine is just wrapping up malolactic fermentation. So in the next couple weeks, uh, I'm gonna let it sit for a little bit longer. In the next couple weeks, we will empty out the, uh, 
the 160 gallon tank we'll put it in temporarily into the two stainless steel tanks we'll pump it over with the uh, the jet 05 pump and then we'll wash this tank down we'll put some oak staves in there and then we'll pump the wine back into the uh, the old tank and, and drop the lid so at that point I'll do a little review on this pump I also bought this pump at st. Patrick's I think it was about three hundred dollars sanitary pump stainless steel head um, a little nervous about buying it from there there's really no reviews online so we'll see we'll give it a shot but anyhow guys that's uh, stainless steel tanks variable capacity variable volume tanks 101 uh, let me know if you have any questions thank you